Hello class, I've been getting a lot of questions lately about being able to uh, easily differentiate between the different types of uh, variables that you might be using in statistics. And I'm talking specifically about nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio variables. So I'm going to give some examples and kind of also some definitions of what exactly they are. Okay, so a a nominal variable to start off with is a qualitative variable, okay? I'll just write qual here to emphasize that. And that means that it doesn't have like an explicit, explicit unit of measurement that either has a zero, can be ordered in any way. Um, it really just represents a group or like a place, okay? So examples that I have here are zip code, eye color, and race, okay? Zip code, you can have a, a zip code like 89113 or 89119, and you wouldn't really be able to put them in any type of list form, like going from least to greatest, and be able to say that this actually represents some organization about zip codes. You also wouldn't be able to subtract one zip code from another zip code and have that make any sense either. Same thing goes for eye color. Uh, blue eye color minus green eye color is not something that you can really quantify or give a kind of uh, coherent explanation for what that kind of calculation means. Same thing for race as well. So these are qualitative variables and basically just explaining the quality of a thing. So your eyes are blue or your eyes are brown and that is the quality that we're looking at. So if we had an experiment that was looking at how well uh, a certain type of sunglasses helps protect uh, a person's eyes. We might do an experiment where we look at blue-eyed people versus brown-eyed people and examine exactly how well their eyes kind of uh, prevented any damage, how the sunglasses prevented any damage to those different color eyes. Okay, so we're just grouping things by these variables. All right, these are primarily known as grouping variables, uh, and the groups don't have any kind of uh, quantifiable differences between them. Uh, we can also group things as well through ordinal variables, and this is again another qualitative variable, but it can be linked to quantitative things. So for example, socioeconomic status, you can have low, uh, middle, and high, right? Here I'm able to I'm able to order them right. I know that low is less than middle and middle is less than high, uh, but I cannot subtract low from middle or middle from high or low from high and have that make any sense either because these again are just qualities of a group. One group is at a low socioeconomic status and another group is a high socioeconomic status. Same thing with education level. So let's say if you have a high school, oops, high school degree a bachelor's degree or a master's degree, I cannot add uh, two high school degrees together to be able to equate to one bachelor's degree. And I can certainly not subtract one uh, bachelor's degree from a master's degree and have that equal uh, uh, a high school degree. However, I can kind of put them in the order that you would achieve these degrees these degrees and that would make sense. So a high school degree would come first, then a bachelor's degree and a master's degree. And these are the primary difference between ordinal variables versus nominal variables, okay? Ordinal variables, you can order them. You can put them in some order and it makes sense. You can't order nominal variables. They don't really make sense in that way. All right, moving on. We have now, uh, if we can now kind of drew a little squiggly line here, that concludes all of our qualitative variables. And now we're going to talk about our quantitative variables. And quantitative now refers to an actual uh, measurement that you can actually subtract one from the other and have it make sense. So first, in interval, you can have, uh, you know, 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, subtracted from 100 degrees and that will equal 20 degrees and that makes sense. It makes sense that you know you subtract one from the other you'll have a thing. You'll have some uh, quantity that you can actually uh, represent in a meaningful way. 
Same thing for SAT scores, which range from 200 to 800, right? And so I can subtract you know, one score from another score and I can get some difference and that difference can make sense. However, as you'll notice is that an SAT score here doesn't have a true zero. And that's the key di distinction for interval is that there is no true zero. Okay, even in Fahrenheit, we might have zero degrees Fahrenheit, right? But that doesn't mean it's the absolute absence of heat because you can go to uh, negative degrees, All right? You can go to negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit and even that still has some heat in it, right? And so this is not the true zero. There is a zero measurement here, but it doesn't represent the true zero. And so that's something that you have to be sensitive to. Uh, remember to think about your scales of whether or not they do or do not actually have a, uh, a true zero in them. And if they don't, they're more than likely interval. And again, so this is a quantitative variable. Now our last variable, uh, which is also a quantitative variable, is known as a ratio. Okay, and this is the most quantifiable one, I would say. So uh, these are perhaps the most uh, ones you're most familiar with when you perhaps think about a, a variable. So height, weight, and age. You can definitely be zero years old. You cannot be negative one years old. Um, uh, you, can, uh, you can be, uh, you know, 100 pounds, but you cannot be negative 100 pounds. You can be five feet tall, but you cannot be uh, negative five feet tall, right? And I can subtract one quantity from another. So I you know that if a person is 30 years old, that they are twice as old as someone who is 15 years old, right? And I can make sense of that very easily. Uh, same thing with height and weight. Uh, you just have to kind of think your way through these things a little more explicitly. If you can at first just be able to differentiate if there's a quality of a thing or is this the quantity of a thing, then you at least narrowed it down to two choices. If it's a qualitative variable, it's either nominal or ordinal. If it's a quantitative variable, it's either interval or ratio. All right, so I hope that was enough of an explanation to be able to help you think through some of these things. I know that the book and other things are not super helpful. I'm gonna try and include one other online source with this tutorial so that hopefully that will um, help you out as you continue to kind of work through these problems. All right, have a good day and I'll talk to you later.